congratulations on the win. A reverse sweep against Clutch Gaming in an almost perfect game five. At what point of the series did you put him out? <laughs> At what point? No. He's the only guy that died. <laughs> yeah, I choked, I choked. Choked at the very end. Well, tell me about the series in general. Tell me at what point in the series was CLG able to find their footing and turn this around? Um, so, you know, after we lost the second game and then we're going to game three draft, I was like, all right, you know, we can either get 3 0 here or we can do something like just out of the ordinary. And I was like, screw it, just pick me Thresh two games and it worked out really well. And same thing for like. <laughs> Same thing for like Power of Evil. He was like, all right, I'm just gonna pick Ari and let's have fun. <laughs> and we ended up winning. It was like the best game that we played. I think Clutch also didn't have any momentum going to the fifth game, so it was a lot easier for us to play. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask about some of those picks. We saw the Ari, we saw your Thresh, and it was your Thresh that really helped keep the team in it. Was there any pressure going or being forced into a position where if you dropped one more game, you were out? Uh, yeah, definitely a lot of pressure because, you know, going to every game, it's like we lose it, it's just over. So we try to treat every game after the first two as a best of one. And I, apparently we're really good at best of ones. We won three in a row, so. <laughs> <laughs> that you did. Well, Biofrost, I got to ask you this because, again, it was, it was a while since you had been in playoffs. And now you've picked up a win in a stadium. And you picked up another victory as a top three team. So does it feel good being a team that people need to contend with now? Yeah, it, it feels good. I think the <laughs> the thing that will seal the deal is if we make it through Gauntlet and we end up going to Worlds because I haven't been to Worlds in like two years and it would be really awesome if I could go again. And CLG is an org, you know, we have the 7-Eleven meme and <laughs> that it'd be nice if we kind of shifted away from that and we can have some success. And 6A looking to you again. Long time since CLG has been in a stadium. I saw hundreds of CLG fans outside and just cheering and wanting to see you guys succeed. So what does having their support really mean to you? Uh, it's pretty crazy. And same for me. I haven't played this on a big stage in a really long time. So yeah, it meant a lot to have all the, all the fans out here. And we could definitely hear it through all our mics and stuff. You just hear everyone just go crazy after every play. So it was really awesome. And going back to Gauntlet, Biofrost, we heard from you. But Stick say, going to Worlds, how big or how important would that be to you? But first, you got to get through Gauntlet and look at TSM. So how do you see them as an opponent? Uh, wow. TSM as an opponent. Well, honestly, I don't really know what to think of TSM. Uh, I think they could either you know, pull it out, maybe do well, or they're just mental boom. I don't know. But um, just for us and us going to Worlds, I, I really want to go to Worlds, and I think going to this best of five, we were like, we're most likely gonna play clutch again mm -hmm. in the gauntlet, so it's really important that we actually do well here to kind of intimidate them, you know? Um, but yeah, I wanna go to Worlds so that I can do something with Bowercross. I've been playing with him for almost two years and we haven't really accomplished much. So it feels good to start winning. <laughs> All right, I like the power move and I hope I get to see a bit more of this bot lane duo, but guys, thank you and congratulations once again. And for more on that game, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avli, and congratulations, CLG, for completing the reverse sweep and in near-perfect game fashion there in that fifth and final game. But really, from game one to game five, it felt like CLG went through a season's worth of evolution in just a very short time span. It felt like in game three to five, CLG went full Dementor and all the things <laughs> and all the draft power that they absorbed out of Clutch Gaming, they took for themselves. And Clutch was led like, whoa, what, who are we? What do we do? And I like how CLG took it all. Biofrost is like, we tried some really crazy stuff, like Corky mid. <laughs> <Corey Yeah. Hunter laughs> mid. We really, really, really went out of our comfort zone there. We, we picked some Sejuani. You know. But let's be fair. They did exactly what we had been asking yes. them to do. And when they did return to that comfort, as Jat was talking about, I think you find that they do have more options than maybe would have been previously thought. They can stick in that zone. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Ari obviously, you know, swapped in here, worked out pretty well. I don't think that is, you know, a traditional PoE pick, at least not this year. I know mm -hmm. you were saying he had played a lot throughout his career. Uh, so I do think it's, it's nice to see the evolution of those champion pools there and and I, I just feel like this series was such a mental battle and it really felt like once clutch kind of lost the momentum they did start to fall apart and and clg was able to take full advantage of that and they played great i mean such a dominant game five to close it out and 
really intelligent stuff in game as well with the lane swapping to avoid some of the bad matchups that they're draft. Uh, you know, inevitably you're going to get a bad matchup. And so when they last pick this Karma into the Poppy, it's like, well, as long as the Poppy isn't absolutely shut down, we'll run away with this game. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, there is just no damage on the side of Clutch Gaming. And that gave CLG so much confidence to do whatever they wanted, knowing that you can stand in front of Clutch Gaming without worrying about getting caught out. Because look at this. What is Flush Gaming legitimately going to do? Ezreal's yeah. hacking away, auto-attacking, hitting Qs, but no health bar is going down. I, I mean, it, it just feels like such an impossible game for an Aurelia. You're going into Poppy and Skarner, right? You're going to get stunned up by the dash, then you're grounded, then you'll be Skarner ulted out of that. And if your Aurelia is not able to threaten the front line, which is not in this game, you essentially just have the Ezreal. So you're like playing this one threat comp. Karma can't kill tanks either. So once Ruin had that stalled laning phase, they're able to exploit this so incredibly well. They knew they could nonstop force fights. There's never going to be threat on your front line. Yeah, I think really smart uh, by the CLG drafts uh, in terms of targeting Cody's uh, champion pool. They are also able to get some of the main picks of Clutch Gaming onto the, onto the bench. And then this is kind of what everyone was worried about with Clutch Gaming. It's like, well, what else do you have to show us? And it seemingly is nothing. Well, it is unique picks to them. It's just they're nowhere near as powerful as the Kiana or Rumble. Like, yeah, uniquely Karma. Okay, that doesn't really do a whole lot for you compared to what you can get. Uh, I know. Yeah. Right? Game game long, game. Azale was just pining for the Cassio pick. It's that may have been the solve to the damage issue. Yeah, I mean, it's such a great pick for Huni. When I was watching the draft, fifth pick comes up. I'm like, oh my god, this is it. He could do it. It's right here. It gives you the additional frontline threat. It's a hard counter to Poppy in lane, uh, mm -hmm. but they didn't want to go for it. Just didn't want to go for it. You saw there at the end uh, the sticks a death uh, that Biofrost so kindly Ooh. pointed out <laughs> <laughs> as ruining the perfect game, though. To hear more, though, from the triumphant team, let's send it back over to Avali for another interview. Thanks, guys. I'm here with the rest of the victorious Counter Logic Gaming Ruin, P O E, and Wiggly. Guys, congratulations on the win. Ruin, I want to start with you because this oh. was your first split with CLG. And for your first split, you made it all the way to top three, and you have a chance to go to world. So, looking back and reflecting, what did you think of your first split? So, I had really many bad games, also okay games this split, I think. But uh, I really love my players, teammates, and coaching staff. I think everyone are helping each other together a lot. And I'm really happy to be CLG. Yeah. Wiggly, is he just being modest? What do you think about having him on CLG? Oh, I love Rin. Every time he dies, like I know he's just going to be like a rock in the top lane. Like Every gank he dies to, it's OK. I know he's going to keep having pressure. So. I have no issue with him in team, so. All right, well, let's talk about you. This is your first playoffs, and again, you made it all the way to top three, and you're playing in front of an audience in this huge crowd. So what was this experience like for you? Uh, I think it was really fun. I mean, after the first two games, I was like, man, like, I don't want this to be my first stage experience. So I think uh, everyone like stayed together. Everyone trusted each other still, and we knew how well we can play. So I think just being able to do that in front of so many people was just amazing, so. Would you say, did you have any nerves going into this series? Uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit. I think that uh, once you started playing poorly, I was like, oh man, like, what's happening, you know? <laughs> so I was a little bit nervous after that, but by then, it was, there was no nerves, so. And PoE, you are a, our veteran player. It was actually your flexibility with the Ari pick, your flexibility with uh, changing different lanes and stuff that really helped CLG pull off this victory. So I got the question for you. You are one tournament away from heading back to EU and potentially participating in Worlds. So is that something that you're excited for and looking forward to? Well, I think we still have a lot to improve on. I think our first two games are really bad, but uh... I feel like we're really like flexible. I think we showed that we were better at swapping and that we have really deep jamming pools and we can like do a lot of crazy stuff just like they do. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna face them in Gauntlet again. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm hyped to um, just do Gauntlet with these boys. I think we can win it and we can go back to you and smash some of you teams. Well, so I think here's the question for you, because everyone's looking at TSM as the final boss, big baddie in the gauntlet, but who do you think is going to be the toughest opponent? I think um, Clutch Gaming again. Clutch Gaming again, so you take them down and it's easy way into Worlds? Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't say easy, but I think they are the strongest uh, in the gauntlet. So um, 
I think if we take them down first, uh, we will have a lot of momentum and confidence going into the like TSM matchup. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty. I mean, I think all the players kind of agree. Like, yeah, free us up, not. No, I mean, yeah, I think Clutch is just uh, by far the best on the team that we have to play against. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And Ruin, I want to hear from you. I want you to send us off being here, being in front of all these people, being on the stage and being with your team. Tell me, what does it all mean to you? Uh, so uh, it's really grateful for to be here. Like I'm really, <laughs> I'm really thank you to come here to everyone. And yeah, really thank you. Well, guys, thank you, and once again, congratulations on the win. And that is it for us here. Back to you guys. Well, Ruin, we're grateful to you for giving us five games in this arena here today. What do you got? I love Whitley's just like, ah, oh, there's no top laner I'd want to watch die on my team other than, than Ruin. He's a rock. Totally fine Man. when he's inting. Uh, hey, when he's inting, he still has pressure. I love that. It's so funny that CLG's like, oh, yeah, we busted out all the funny picks, and we're, we, we could be crazy if we want to. It's like, you're so you good at poppy. doing your own thing. Like, why do you keep doing this? You're just a... Keep hey, playing your own The thresh works. Right, Look. but those aren't crazy. They're just barely, barely a, a little bit different. They wanted the wacky. stage experience. They got it. Uh, I think uh, the CLG uh, players there confirmed what a lot of other people uh, believe when looking at the gauntlet, which is that Clutch Gaming will actually be their toughest competition, uh, and CLG would now likely be considered the favorite. And you have to think that this is somewhat uh, based on scrims as well, because TSM has been scrimming this whole time. I'm sure everyone has been scrimming them because you don't want to play people on the same side of your bracket. So you're going to play some of the people preparing for Gauntlet. And the fact that a lot of them are, you know, seemingly not looking at them as the true final boss, even if they're the last team in the Gauntlet, speaks a lot to uh, TSM's current state, I think. I don't know. I see Gauntlet as a wild animal here. Oh, it you can have is. fly you quests, and, you know, they've been scrimming, and suddenly they peak at the exact time. They have right. a better strategy because you just need to beat the these teams won best of five. So it's not so unimaginable that a team that has been struggling all season can watch all these games and figure out how to beat each of these teams. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly possible, and I think for Clutch as well, a lot, a lot to take away from this. Yes, CLG, I think, is the favorites going into that gauntlet, but mm -hmm. that being said, this was still a five-game series. You're one game away from actually taking them down, and you now have a little bit of time to retool and maybe pick up some of those additional picks to try to have some more threats to actually close the series out. That's coming at us in a couple of weeks. And CLG's reverse sweep, though, each player was tested, but when the backs was were rather against the wall. It was Biofrost that closed out the match and earned himself player of the series. Rough start to the series with what happened in the bot lane, uh, but in game three, he was one of the critical players in turning it around. Like he said, with that thrash pick, he wanted more playmaking for himself and he put it sick. to good use, yeah. Oh boy. Just in general, the roaming around the map, the safety that he can provide for the team, the opportunity for picks, engages, playmaking. It was all there for Biofrost, and he wanted it. Yeah, and I think it's really important for his confidence. He talked about, you know, after those first two rough games, deciding to go to the Thresh. It works out two games in a row. He really did step up huge for the team, and I think for him individually, you know, getting some of that confidence back after not having to win playoffs in a couple of years, I think was really, really important and could spell good things for them going forward. I think that confidence is so tied to the champions because we're seeing this trend of, you don't, you're not necessarily picking the most powerful champions, you're picking the champions that you have the most experience on, like PoE having the games of Ari or the Thresh for Biofrost being one of the best Threshes when he first came onto the LCS scene. So, oh man, that's not where you, that's a rough one for Clutch Gaming. Well, let's talk about this team because while yes, they the you know the the reverse sweep came through for them. I, I don't think by any means Clutch is sitting back there in in utter defeat and solemnness around their prospects for Worlds. This series was very close to being over in their favor in Game Three, even right with the way that things had begun. And so there are many ways that they can diagnose and kind of retool for the gauntlet. Yeah, I mean, th this is going to hurt. You know, you, you, I'm not going to lie. You know, coming off a reverse sweep, you're going to feel terrible. You're going to, you know, feel hopeless right now. But that is why they're obviously debriefing. That is why the coaches are talking to them right now, going through this, you know, reaffirming that, hey, we were this close to actually closing this out. You can win gauntlet. And I also think that if you were told to clutch at the start of the split that you will get top four, that you will be in gauntlet, 
they would be pretty damn happy with that. But you do have to be a little bit removed, I think, from the actual loss to start feeling a little bit more proud of what you've accomplished and how much you've improved. Because this team looked hopeless going into playoffs. They were one in nine against playoff teams. Right. You took Liquid to five. You beat TSM. And you took CLG to five. That is a damn good performance. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Couldn't have said it better. We return tomorrow, though, for what you have all been waiting for. The LCS Summer Finals presented by Rocket Mortgage, where Cloud9 will either stop their five-year title draft or Team Liquid will chain their fourth consecutive title, the first of its kind. Really oh. excited for this one. And I, I got to say, Cloud9 looking so good, uh, all split long, so much aggression. They're so good around the mid jungle and they have the MVP on their team this time around, something that hasn't really been the case in a lot of the times that they've made the finals appearances. You know, I really was feeling that if Clutch Gaming were gonna, was going to close it out today, that Cloud9 having a similar style would be able to do the same thing against Team Liquid. But the fact that CLG bounced back in the way that looked almost what could have been against C9 really makes me think that Cloud9 is a team that got pushed to the brink by CLG as well because this CLG squad, what they showed in the last three games, really should have been their entire playoffs run as they took so many games just experimenting a little bit too much and pushed it to the edge. I think that's where you'll cite TL's pedigree in terms of players, right? Their ability to stay calm, cool, collected in a series already got the reverse sweep back in spring to make it to MSI. They're probably very capable of doing the same thing if C9 puts them in that position. Uh, by the same token, Sven Skarin has been very outspoken about the fact that he believes if they were in that position in spring, they would have closed it out. He's got the opportunity, Azale, to shut it down tomorrow for Team Liquid. Keep them tied for just those three titles in a row. Yeah, I mean, it would mean so much to them, right? You know, the organization, Cloud9, is still considered one of the best orgs, one of the best teams for so long, but it's been five long years since yeah. they have actually taken home a championship, despite the fact that they made it to the finals every single year. You know, Sneaky as well. Uh, <laughs> always the bridesmaid, never the bride, right? Like, you know, it's five exactly. straight second <laughs> places. Feels so bad to always be that close and never be able to close it out. They want it. They want it. You know that. Both of these teams want it. Of course, that will hit your screens tomorrow. So stay tuned, though, after the show for today, where The Dive, Kobe, Azale, Mark, and Meteos previewed the finals outside the Little Caesars Arena live in front of Detroit. For now, though, myself, the casters, the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for the crowning of the LCS champion. Good night. <laughs>